a criminal thing because gunshots were fired and Kelsey at the time also corroborated the puzzle that we're completely forgetting to cover here. It's not like the criminal look right now. I'm just talking in general. It doesn't matter. Like we granted gunshots or not. I'm asking you male and female. Uh huh. A male is accused of doing something to a woman. Right. By the way, I think it's different. The opposite way around. Currently, if a woman is accused of doing something to a dude, and especially if it's not proven yet, there's no punitive action, especially by the industry that she's in and the DSPs that she rely on and the entities that surround her career that's going to say, fuck you. We are blackballing you until, you know, um, but you are there examples of this? I, I, I can't I can't speak of this. I, I feel like maybe you have some examples of this, but uh, I, mean, I don't know. I, I, have you ever heard of Blueface and Kershaw Rock? Like we've seen her basically give him two black guys. You know what I mean? Bro, Broken what career numbers. does Kershaw Rock have? Let's be real. Like, yeah, Blueface is absolutely a victim of domestic abuse. And it's not like, who the fuck is rocking with her, though? Um, all what of the, the blogs. Hold on. All of the blogs, the Shade Room, the Center Third. She has a very popping reality what? show on Zeus. Hold on. She has a very popping reality show on Zeus Network that basically just hypes up and showcases her beating up her boyfriend. If yeah, I mean, I think that's I think that's fucked up. Don't misunderstand me. But in this in that circumstance, she is the perpetrator, and uh, the fact that she is not getting any sort of criminal consequences sent her way is most likely yet another instance of like police in general. One, not giving a fuck about black people in general, and two, also on top of that, notoriously being bad at dealing with domestic abuse cases. And, and by the way, like, but I have no idea what the fuck the the Zeus. I mean, I don't know what the fuck the Zeus Network is or the blogosphere that you're talking about. All I know is that for most normies, it's like Johnny Depp and Amber. What about Johnny Depp and Amber? I mean that that was litigated and Johnny Depp won the court case. What do you mean? Well, but what about until he won it? That's that, that's the only thing. In hip hop, Tory Lanez was a black sheep. Listen. I'm telling you now, I have no problem if people want to just completely boycott it. It has been um, litigated in a court of law and a jury has made their decision. What I'm saying is that allegations, and I'm, I'm, and I'm still trying to ask you the question, if a situation between a man and a woman, doesn't matter which man and which woman, happens, right? We obviously know certain things are very sensitive matters because we obviously got to protect our women. But if there's an allegation that a man completely and vehemently denies, and now he's been accused of some shit, and he's a public figure. She might be a public figure too. What do you I, think the appropriate course of action is for all the- I have, a, I have a question for you. What would it have taken for you to say Tory Lanez conclusively shot Megan Thee Stallion? Because like, as far as like shooting cases goes, as far as like when there's a victim that was there that survived the attack, and then there is a perpetrator that two of the you know involved parties said was responsible for- the the uh shooting when that's pretty open and shut like i'm not exactly i'm not exactly a a big fan of the criminal justice system especially as it pertains to to dealing with black people but having said that what would it have taken for you Hassan, you're not answering my questions and this is why you're so good at what you do right no i because like we're talking about unrelated things about like you're turning this into a man and woman thing when it's not a man and woman thing because there is a responsible party and we're not looking at the facts of this individual court case Hey, how could I have... Wait, I wasn't there. How the fuck could I have known? How could I have known? He said, I didn't shoot the gun. Well, you, hey, look, at, well, you, look, you look at the... You look at the additional... You look at the additional evidence. You look at the witness testimony at the time. You look at the events that transpired at the time. You are unfortunately putting the cart before the horse and like thinking interject. about the consequences. Hassan, let me interject. That's why everybody was upset because at that point in time... Everybody wanted it to just read that, yo, this guy did it. That's there's nothing else. Then you can go back to it. Go on TMZ, type, hey, the GSR report says there was gunpowder residue found on both Tory and the girl. Yeah, then, I agree. You know, I know I'm familiar. Yeah. Yes, GSR residue back, also, according okay, to experts. I'm not done, I'm not done. Go back and then say there was an independent witness that said they seen a muzzle flash in front of a woman. Granted, if you see both things, keep in mind, we're not 
at the point of litigating at that point? Are you still just going to be going with this woke agenda that, yo, these Jews... I mean, I don't like think it's woke agenda like, when... I don't think it's a woke agenda thing. thing. I think he when... So he must have did it. He got a dick. He must have did it. Because right no, now... that's not... No, no, no. You're trying to put me in a box here, and I disagree with that. I think that if roles were reversed... And Megan Thee Stallion had shot Tory Lanez in the foot. And Tory Lanez is a tiny little guy. So, you know, and Megan Thee Stallion overpowered Tory Lanez, shot him in the foot. And he, as the victim in that circumstance, turned around and said, Megan Thee Stallion shot me. Okay. And the third party involved also said that originally when it first came out, because that was the actual information that we had before a third party witness that was uh, unrelated and uninvolved in the situation decided to give inconclusive testimony i would have said the exact same things that i'm saying now i would have said it seems to me like tory lays was shot in the foot by megan the stallion but that's not what happened what happened is the exact opposite of that like this is not a man versus woman thing no matter how hard we try to like uh massage it I, I look at the facts of a situation. Obviously, there are, you know, systemic forms of discrimination in every instance. It's, like, unavoidable. It's impossible to escape. But in this circumstance, I'm looking at the evidence, and it seems like the victim's testimony was corroborated by the other witness Brother, and also victim. Hassan, you are, like, like, like you got to be virtual signaling to the highest, my guy. Bro, and what I, do you mean? I feel like a woman got shot in the fucking foot. And she said, this dude shot me. And, and that's virtue signaling? That no, because well, we're going over facts and also narrative. Now you're bringing the Fed involved? Yo, Hassan, hang on loud. Yo. Is, he, is he not? Is he not, a, is he not a Fed? I thought he was, but... Hassan, you know you're virtually signaling crazy. Yo, I'm Bro, with you on. Oh, oh, come on. That's that's an exit ramp for you. The, the same oh. virtue signaling. It's just like, oh, you no, care about not, women so not, much. You're virtue signaling. Like, no, I'm just looking at the situation. Like, someone got shot. They said, someone got shot. They said, this person shot me. I'm like, okay, it seems like that could be true. This would be a crazy conversation, right? Um, hold on. What's going on? Hello? Anyway, okay. Yo, here's the point I'm trying to say. You hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, okay. Here's the point I'm trying to say, brother. <sighs> no, it would be different if I was sitting here like fucking punching in the air. Like, I'm not accepting the fucking verdict. I am. It's accepted. All I'm trying to say. Yeah, but you, you keep, but you keep saying I'm also virtue signaling. I'm in the wrong. All this other stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you're throwing these things in the air to say, well, why didn't you know that he was guilty from the get go? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, okay, I said when someone is shot, regardless of whether they're a man or a woman, okay, and they survive the shooting and they turn around and say, this person shot me. I'm not immediately gonna be like, ah, I don't know. I don't. I feel like they're lying. Like, what the fuck? She got bullet. She got bullet fragments in her feet. Hey, hold on. I, I didn't say she didn't get shot. I don't know by who. <laughs> okay, I understand. But the person. But you're you're not hearing no. me. I'm saying she got hey, shot, kidding. and she yes. said this person shot me. Okay. Okay, and then she said, I did not see him. My back was turned. No, she also said she did see him she literally turned her neck around in her testimony enough to be able to see who was shooting at her okay, okay. all right she also cool. said the the dance bitch line too nobody even her best friend never even heard that line okay, okay but it doesn't matter because her best friend also literally the more important part of this conversation is her best friend also originally in the actual testimony the 9 calls in every single circumstance said that it was tory lane's who shot Megan the Stallion? Tory Lanez also apologized to every single person involved. Now, he's Canadian, so maybe that's the reason why he apologized. Canadians love apologizing. But ultimately, it does seem a little suspicious when everyone is saying that everyone involved originally in the immediate aftermath is saying this person shot this person, okay? All right, okay, so, so as it relates to that, let me ask you this question. So why do you think Kelsey said Tory Lanez shot Megan the Stallion and then pled the fifth this time around uh, a year later. 
I, okay, so why do you think that when, listen, she said that when she wasn't under oath. Why do you think when she was under oath, she said, I never saw Tori shoot anyone or saw Tori with the gun? You're, you're using when she's not under oath. I'm using when she could actually be charged with perjury. So who got the upper hand here? Wait. So you think, so you're saying she lied to the, you're suspecting that she lied originally to the prosecutors, well, not the prosecutors, but the, but the investigators. Well, it was actually the prosecutors because they only did that. That interview that we're talking about was done in September. Directly okay. to the prop. So it, do you, you can't you can't do that though. That's still well, you still well, can't lie way. to the you still can't lie to the prosecutors in that she regard. Said, hey, you guys made me feel uncomfortable. Like that's still See? illegal. She was hinting towards, hey, I was under duress. Okay, but she also said Tory Lane shot Megan the Stallion. So you're like you're you're desperately grabbing on to her hinting at things while simultaneously completely writing off all the shit that she did say. So so you're telling me that you are going to take the the um interview over the phone, right? Way more serious than her testimony under oath in person in court. Also, she never said she doesn't know. I'm pretty sure she said that she's pleading the fifth and that she didn't want to answer. No, no, no. She pled the fifth anytime it was it was a conversation about how did you guys was there a fight before um, the shots were fired? And she said what I believe the driver's gonna say. Hey, I never saw Tori with the gun. This is what she said, definitely, hundred percent. I never saw Tori with a gun, and I never seen him fire the shot. Wait. And then at first she said, I was unsure that he was shot, but later I realized she was shot. Okay, this is precisely the reason why I asked you what your speculation is. Because, like, I need to understand, like, what you thought happened, because I gave you what I think happened, right? Like, there was a scuffle, there was an altercation, right? And then, like, Tory Lanez popped off, has a short fuse, didn't actually intend to fucking shoot Megan Thee Stallion, accidentally did, you know? Little guy, big gun, for him at least, you know, hard to fucking control. And he's drunk. So, so then, so then, what is your, what is your take? Like, do you think there's a third shooter? Are we talking like JFK, Grassy Knoll situation? Like, what the fuck happened then? Was it Kelsey who shot Megan the Stallion then? Is that what you think? Oh, 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 hey, this is why I went into the whole thing by saying, are we here to find out? I said, we won't find out who actually did it. Right? We're only Bro, but, fight Okay, but it. come on. You you are you are making okay, a lot of differences. Right. Like, don't escape that. I'll tell you my narrative. My narrative is this. <clears throat> okay. They're at this party with Kylie. At the party, I believe that, you know, um Meg, who was messing around with Tori behind her best friend's back, because the first person, and by the way, it does matter. I'm not trying to slush shame her, but it does matter who was having sex with who. Tori was having sex earlier in the year with Kelsey. She catches COVID. She goes back home. He starts messing around with um, um, Meg. Kelsey comes back into the picture. And at one of the most and first public events they're at together, they're at Kylie's house. Okay? They were drinking before Tori gets there. Tori gets there. He's trying to game up Kylie. Meg feels a little bit type of way because number one, that's disrespectful. I invited you somewhere, and we're, now we are. By the way, we're still not at the at the events that took place. Okay, but you're you're building backstory. Fine, you're saying it's not like victim blaming or slush shaming. It's just it's important. You have to build it because if you think that somebody, if I diss you as a streamer, would you shoot me, brother? If I say you're the worst streamer on the platform, would you shoot me? No, of course not. But I'm not Tory Lanes. You know what I mean. Oh my! So Tori is just like this degenerate guy who's not. I mean, like, I, I I think I think that I, yeah, I think that he uh, I think that he is not necessarily degenerate, but he definitely does have a like I said, short fuse, very insecure, short fuse, drunk, has a gun around. That's what happens. This well, happens all the fucking time to less famous people. And okay, it's not, no, no, no. Short fuse and shooting a woman is like, come on, bro. We, are we gonna act like there's no levels of separation, dog? Come I mean, on. I know, but like, then, then we we come to the other side of the altercation where you are easily believing without any evidence whatsoever. Not a single person has said that this is the case. 
okay? You believe that Kelsey has a short enough fuse to fucking shoot Megan the Stallion, but Tory Lanez doesn't. So that's why I'm like a little confused about where you are trying to go with this conversation. Unless there was a third shooter with a sniper rifle, okay? You're, it's either Kelsey who shot Megan or Tory who shot Megan. You see, in, in your story, hey, you suck at music. Boom, 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 boom. I say complete cap. I'm getting to it. I'm going to spear the story. So there's a bunch of jealousy going on. The women are arguing, but they're also arguing with Tori, which also is in line with what pretty much um, Meg even said on um, um, that Gail King interview. All three of them are arguing. Um, Kylie kicks them out. You have all three women arguing, or you have two women and, and, and Tori arguing, okay? Uh -huh. And then I got to use Sean Kelly's testimony. Uh -huh. The car pulls over, and Meg hops out and starts to assault Kelsey. Sean Kelly said it. She was kicking her for seven. Sean years. Kelly, who was sleeping at this point, right? Okay. Uh, listen, are we gonna are we just gonna throw out his testimony because he doesn't agree? I mean, or has uh, uh, no. But I would, I would be a little, you know, I would be a little uh, questioning it a little bit, right? Like a little bit of skepticism is necessary here because, like, why the fuck was he up? watching uh the street randomly in the middle of the fucking night versus he woke up the gunshots that's a so such a massive inconsistency and, and un, you know common sense probably favors one side that he did wake up the gunshots which was her which was his original testimony to i pigeonholed on him there was an altercation even if you didn't believe that he saw it okay so are you gonna then say um are you gonna then say that um, uh, um, um, the the hair missing, um, the pendant, the ring or the nail broken from Kelsey was not due to any type of assault? No, I do think I do think Kelsey got assaulted. I think Tory Lanes and Kelsey had a scuffle afterwards. That was the other piece of the evidence. She said it didn't happen. She said he never put a hands on me. You're saying Kelsey said Tory Lanes never put hands on Kelsey. Is that what you said? Yes. And by the way, if she had said that, any respectable district attorney, if if you were told by a woman that Tory, before going into a complete like like school shooter rage, beat the brakes off you, they would have charged him for an additional count of assault. He's not charged for that. Where do so you if, wait? Hold on. Where do you? Where, well, I mean, the the case was you know the case was about Tory Lane's. Uh, using a gun on Megan the Stallion. I get what you're saying. Where do you think that came from? Where do you where do you think the where do you think that suggestion came from then? What do you mean? Like where did where did the Tory Lanes and Kelsey uh, uh, fighting like what what do you think happened there? Meg the Stallion says she's seen a bump, and then. Uh, um, in the opening statements, which supposedly I guess Kelsey was supposed to attest to, when Tory let off the shots and was approaching Meg, Kelsey intercepted, and then supposedly Meg, no, not Meg, I mean, uh, Tory, he beat down Kelsey on his way to Meg, which Kelsey said, that never happened. So why do you think Tory Lane, so why did Tory Lane apologize to Kelsey then? I'll tell you why. Yeah, yeah. I would love to. I would love to hear your perspective on this. This is only a theory. I, you know, clearly. No, I mean, look. I want to hear your theories. I, and we're I talking here. Okay, I would believe. Hey, if you've been fucking both of the girls, and then you started to try to fuck another girl, or you were trying to kick game to another girl in front of both of them, they're starting to fight because of it. The fight is escalating, and apparently, you throw it in both of their faces that you're having sex with them. Yes. They throw you under the bus and say, hey, you're a shit musician, blah, blah, blah. But if you didn't make it a scene among these two friends that now they're fighting themselves and even trying to fight you, <laughs> that <laughs> seems like. He seems like a good guy. He seems like a really good guy. He just, you know, had both of these women's best interests at heart. That's why I apologize. I'm just saying, as a man, I mean, it's crazy because like one person shot Megan the Stallion, right? Like, so he's apologizing to the person who shot Megan the Stallion because that's fucking wild. If he's both apologizing to Megan the Stallion and also apologizing to the woman who shot Megan the Stallion, being like, "I'm so sorry that like you know things got out of hand and you shot Megan the Stallion." 
I'm, I'm sorry. That, that if that's, that's believable to you, then I don't know what to tell you. Like, because it, it does seem like him apologizing to all parties involved, including the fucking bodyguard that wasn't there, kind of makes it seem like he might have been if, responsible. Because, like, if, if saying that I'm apologizing for what may have escalated the situation for this to happen, it doesn't necessarily mean to me that he's apologizing for shooting. Because you're just drastically different. Because uh, the, the original testimony from Kelsey, ex-friend Kelsey Harris, uh, absolutely said Tory Lanez fired a gun at Megan. Uh, that's what she told the police back in September. And um, on top of that, uh, you know, she said she was hesitant to give details now, right? Even though the interview was played in its entirety. Um there was also, I believe, hold on. Uh, Kelsey says she started her hearing gunshots after the second or third shot. She turned around and says she saw Tori on the front seat firing the gun forward over the open right front door in Megan's direction. Um, Kelsey was outside the vehicle but behind Tori and could only see Meg from the chest up. She ran towards Megan in defense mode and saw her bleeding. This is her testimony. And Tori was still sitting in the front seat, apparently in shock. She claims Tori walked toward them, and that's when Kelsey and Tori started fighting. This is her, this is Kelsey's testimony. She describes it as Tori assaulting her and adds that she did not see the gun at that point. Once they all got back in the SUV, Kelsey says she texted Megan Security 911, Tori shot Meg. That's the interview. That's not a testimony. That's the interview. Yeah, but, but like that is literally, okay, in, that is profoundly no, important. That, okay, that's her account. That literally played a significant role in launching a criminal investigation. But no, uh, again, again, are we arguing what we think happened or are we arguing what should be proven in court? If someone says, I lied, like, okay, you can play the statement all you want, but I lied. I'm telling you the truth now. Is that person credible? Yes or no? Wait, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Okay, you're going off what Kelsey said in September, but she mm -hmm. literally showed up and said, I lied. I lied. She said, I lied then. And I'm under oath now, and I lied. So I told you, I, I'm telling you I lied then. What's up? Are you going to say, okay, we're going to just ignore the fact you're telling us you're lying? I don't think, gonna... she never said she lied, by the way. I mean, she, she did. Lied. She, said, she said she lied on her testimony. She said she lied. Where, did, where did she say she lied on her testimony? She just said she can't remember, which is inconsistent for sure, because it was very clear when she was offering uh, evidence to uh, to launch this criminal investigation, but um, I I don't think she ever said I lied. Um, she just said I can't recall. Yo, Act Myron's here. We just joined in. Um, are you guys talking about Meg the Stein right now? Or are you guys talking about Kelsey in particular? Um, we joined. We're, we're, we're talking about Kelsey's um, statement. He's okay. using one from September. I'm using the fact that she got on the stand and said, "Fuck that! I did not tell the truth." Wait, I she would, never. Yeah. Wait, whoa, whoa. no, 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 no. You can't. You can't embellish in this circumstance because this is pretty important. She okay. never got on the stand and said, "I fucking lied." That's crazy. Yes, she did. She got. Just, these are the facts. These, these are the facts. This okay, no, 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 no. Before you say these are the facts, I wanna. I want you to actually show me the facts, and not Milagro Grams, who has been proven time and time again that she was. You know. Uh, okay. Mo, Mo Gagnat, who was there in person, who watched it, who is a lawyer himself, he literally said she took the stand. First thing she did was take the Fifth Amendment. You cannot take the Fifth Amendment unless you might be criminally culpable for a crime. Then they said, listen, we'll give you immunity if you testify. Wait, what? No, you can, you can still, t you can plead the Fifth regardless. Like, you can just refuse yeah. to testify. Hassan, I, I hate to say this to you, bro, but I used to investigate criminal activity. I no, I, I, I know. I know you're a fit. I know. I've, I've seen it. I've seen you talking about it. So I'm telling you, you cannot take the Fifth Amendment, okay, <laughs> unless you're criminally culpable. That is why Gunna is not protected if they call him to testify. He Wait, has to No, you can definitely say, I plead the Fifth. It doesn't matter if you're, like, criminally culpable or not. You can still refuse to testify, even if it's... It. A judge will rule it. You're not compelled to testify, right, if you don't have a Fifth, a Fifth Amendment privilege. No, it's literally, it's a right. You can just say that you are pleading the Fifth, regardless of whether it's because you're incriminating yourself or not. You can only take the Fifth 
if you might incriminate yourself, you cannot take the fifth any in any other circumstance. You are compelled to testify. No, you can still no, you you definitely still can in any circumstance plead the fifth. It doesn't matter what the truth is. What? So you can just I, I, literally plead the fifth. No, you can I, I plead you the fifth. Even if you're not, even if you're not, even if you that doesn't at immediately mean that you are self-incriminating. If that was the case, then that could be used as additional evidence. Like you guys are trying to do right now, but that's not the case. I know that, like in 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 colloquial, in like the the you know in in normie speak, we always assume when you plead the fifth, oh that means they're guilty, like they're incriminating themselves. That's what we say, but that's not the case. You can plead the fifth even if you are not actually incriminating yourself. That's kind of the point of being able to plead the fifth be and and not having it be used against you as evidence. Let's use your let's use your logic then, Hassan. If that was the case. Why did her lawyer fight tooth and nail to get her immunity? Ooh. I, exactly. I, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I'll, I'll, read, I'll, read, I'll read from uh, this is the 14th of December. So this is Tory Lanez and Megan trial day three. Kelsey takes a stand. She admits to lying to prosecutors about everything she told no, them. No, you're reading September. No Jumper right now, who literally, by your accounts, got fucking got DJ Academics. They got fucking got, they jumped the gun and literally posted about the, 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 the verdict coming in before the verdict had actually come in. You can't just use their one-sided assessment of the events that took place. You originally went to Megan Kunif. I'm watching your stream right now. You couldn't find the actual thing that you wanted out of her, so you went to find the No Jumper tweet. If you give me Megan Kunif's test of, uh, Megan Kunif's, uh, uh, you know, actual court reporting, then we can have a conversation. I got it. It's like, it's like you citing yourself. Come on. Hassan, you're missing the point here that Kelsey, right, changed her story. She went in and did an interview with, with actually the prosecutors, not even law enforcement, which is another big red flag. But she went ahead and Wait, did what, an interview. That, what, what's the red flag? I, I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Red flag is she did an interview with the prosecutors with no law enforcement there, which is a huge red flag because prosecutors are not supposed to be direct witnesses and witness testimony when you're doing a criminal investigation there's supposed to be an investigator there and the reason why there wasn't an investigator there is because the lead detective stogner right Wait, he has no you can issue. you can definitely have prosecutors directly uh question uh witnesses wait what what no. you need an investigator there they can't be the only witnesses because they're the ones prosecuting the case. It's a conflict of interest. You need a sworn law enforcement officer there. But conducting most of the prosecutors are literally law enforcement officers pretty much functionally. So I, I don't know. Like you're making it seem like they're operating on different teams here. The, yes, I mean, they do work together. However, you need an agent, a detective, some type of police presence there to do the investigation and to do the interviews, bro. Wait, I, I got, can I just address something really quickly? I love chat being right. like, no black voices. Hassan didn't want a black voice in that circumstance. Bro, no jumper. Adam 22's operation. We're calling that a, a, a black voices now. Really? Halo boom? Is that what you're saying in the chat? Dumbass. Shut the fuck up. Meme oh, rapper. And the point I'm trying to make is there's want to be meme rapper motherfucker. Okay, sorry, go on. There's problems with Kelsey's situation because number one, she was interviewed by prosecutors only. There wasn't an investigator there, which is a problem in itself. And then second, she switched her story up. She said, "Hey, Tori did X, Y, Z, and you know made him criminally culpable." And then when she came in to testify, she immediately took the fifth. And then her defense attorney said, "We need immunity." They tried to get. Um, uh, they try to get immunity where she'd be covered all the way, but they were only able to get use immunity because obviously to get transactional immunity, which would be her protected all the way, that is very difficult to get. You would need a DA signature to get that. And obviously they're in the middle of a trial. They don't have time to go back to the DA saying, yo, we need the signature. So we're like, listen, we'll give her use immunity. We're on the record. We're not going to prosecute her. That's when she felt comfortable to go ahead and testify after that pretty much. So if she wasn't culpable, why would she fight so hard? Why would her defense attorney fight so hard to get her use immunity, bro? You can only take the fifth, right? You can ask any attorney this. Any defense attorney will tell you this. You can only take the fifth when you might be giving testimony might, that might incriminate yourself. But if, you, if you're not necessarily giving testimony that's going to incriminate yourself and other people, then you're compelled to testify. That is why Gunna cannot assert the Fifth Amendment privilege if they call him to testify in the YSL trial. Uh -huh. Young Doug, they're going to call Gunna on and he cannot claim Fifth Amendment. He will, he will have to testify. That is a part of his plea deal. Okay. So... 
I can't speak on why she wanted to, uh, why she no longer wanted to offer her testimony. Okay. Um, she did get granted immunity. I'm pretty sure not the, not the full blown immunity. If she was like to go up on that stand and be like, I actually fucking, uh, I actually shot someone. I, I was the one who shot, uh, you know, Megan the stallion. Then all of a sudden your case falls apart. Of course, the prosecutor is not going to fucking do that because someone could very easily fall out of favor with the victim like Kelsey and Megan did, and then turn around and be like, you know what, actually, I'm the one who shot it, but guess what? You guys gave me the fucking immunity. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's ridiculous. She could have on the stand and said that, though, because they gave her use immunity, which means her testimony that was given in that circumstance could not be used against her. However, that does not mean that law yeah, and yet she still And yet she still didn't offer inconsistencies. She could have very easily said, I am here to tell my truth. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. And, and I was wrong originally. She didn't even say that. Yeah, because she because she knew before she was lying. Uh, she, no, she got, but, but she got immunity. But you lying. just explained that she got immunity from the original lie that she had told. If you're claiming that she originally lied. Yeah, she originally lied. And she didn't want to give testimony. So because you're, you're admitting that she would not have been liable under perjury in that regard because she had gotten immunity to offer her true testimony in that circumstance. No, um, what I'm saying is that she could have been found. There's a bunch of things that they could have hit her with. There's a bunch of charges she could have got hit with. Like what? Like Which is oh, why... Like I, shooting, I, I, shooting I, uh, Megan Thee Stallion? You don't trust no jumper. I got my man, I think I think he writes uh, LA Times, James Queeley. This is, this is uh, Kelsey on the stand. Our interview that they were trying to refresh her memory many times with, she says our interview was not a hundred percent truthful. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Does that make you feel good, brother? I did not tell the truth. She said yeah. whatever you're saying, I did not tell the truth. She basically said it, referred to it, and kept almost looking at her lawyer to say, "Hey, if I answer this, am I getting fucked up legally?" And they did many sidebars. That's just the reality of it. Yeah, her her interview her interview not being one hundred percent truthful, especially when there's additional circumstances involved in there, like whether or not I actually I'm not familiar if she got uh, asked the question about the million dollars that like uh, Tori then get offered them or something like that. Um, yeah, but there did. are plenty of there are plenty of additional instances in that interview. You you are the one who's inferring the parts that you believe is not truthful from that interview, and she still absolutely ended up getting. Did you read the rest of that? What is the what's the rest of the quote? We don't trust the no jumper, but we definitely trust the LA Times. Yeah, of course I trust the LA Times. And I trust court reporters. And you yourself admitted that no jumper got got. So if no jumper got got and fucking literally Okay, okay. no jumper. Harris says she struggled with postpartum depression, depression and a recent death in the family, and her mind isn't here right now. She also denied Lanes offered her hush money, which Megan alleged. He did to the tune of a million dollars. Yeah, the exact quote from her, by the way, wasn't an immediate denial. She literally said it wasn't exactly the way that that was presented. I know, I know what I'm talking about because I know what quote that was. The reason why we're bringing this up, by the way, is because she has postpartum depression now. She has a recent death in the family now. If anything, her evidence or her additional information that she's going to offer currently now and not back then is going to be less conclusive. Wait, wait, what about this one? Critically, she wouldn't confirm she saw Lanes with the gun, which she said in the recorded interview, or that Lanes threatened to shoot her. She won't confirm it in court. She's she like, wouldn't yeah, her. that doesn't... Wait, what do you mean? That doesn't Ask mean anything. Him. She already had. She's, oh, you keep you keep referencing. Yes, interview, she literally right? said the yes interview, because she, we you know you and I both I, know you and I both know she went on the stand and said I can't recall anything. I can't recall anything. I have postpartum. I'm depressed. I can't recall anything. Is basically what she said, and then she pled the fifth. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that she fucking absolutely lied. That's the reason why they played the whole interview. In a court of law, if a if, if if any type of witness or victim can't recall their statements and can't even affirm to it, right? Keep in mind, she's now under oath. She already acted weird with the hey, I needed like immunity of the center. She can't co-sign the majority of what she said in a goddamn interview, right? 
you think that the jury should be like, oh, okay, let's just believe her. Really? Come on, brother. Well, first of all, the jury did believe her, ultimately. The jury believed Megan the Stallion, who also is a witness in this circumstance. The jury also believed what she said originally, which is important, important to address in this circumstance. And the jury, of course, did not take into consideration that she pled the fifth especially because she had the opportunity given an immunity to go back and correct the record and refuse to do so while simultaneously admitting that currently right now in this very moment was not likely to give a clear cut version of the events considering her postpartum depression and a near uh, and a recent death in the family that's what i'm stating that's the reason why the jury deliberated in the way that it did oh, hold on yeah, but you're point here hassan the, the, see here's the thing tory gets that fifth amendment privilege to not testify not being it used against him kelsey does not kelsey is a witness in the case she's not the one on trial okay but, so, yeah and, i know but you can still you can still say some dumb shit or potentially think that you're incriminating yourself or ultimately say you're you have the right to plead the fifth regardless you have the right to plead the fifth regardless of whether or not you're actually incriminating yourself or not you just have that right that is a right that you have you're just rambling bro bro i'm telling you Corey gets the privilege of them not being able to judge him for taking the fifth. Kelsey does not because the Tory, Tory is the one that is accused. Okay? That is the reason why. So when Ke Kelsey doesn't get that same Fifth Amendment privilege to that level as Tory because he's the one that's actually being charged in a criminal case, in a criminal court of law in the United States. So Kelsey doesn't get that, which is why she was like, I need immunity if I'm going to talk. Okay. Because she is compelled to testify. That is why she asked for immunity in the first place. Look. Go ahead. You you said that you have to be guilty to plead the fifth. That is not the case. You Just don't have to be right. guilty. You yeah, have yeah, to or, be or potentially liable, right, from a criminal standpoint to invoke the Fifth Amendment. Yes, an innocent witness may validly claim the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. If you are an innocent witness, you can still plead the fifth. That is precisely the reason why. We look at pleading the fifth as a right that people have and not as an indication that that person is somehow criminally liable, which is what you guys are doing right now. Okay. That you can the only, entire, the entire concept behind pleading the fifth would be null and void. If we automatically assume that that person is fucking guilty every time they pled the fifth. No, no. Pleading the fifth isn't an implication of guilt. However, if you, but you are, you are making it seem as though it is. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, one could take it as that, but if you have zero conflict with what's being asked of you when you're either subpoenaed and you're on the stand, you got to answer. You can't just magically say, I plead the fifth. And then say the judge says to you or you and your attorney, hey, okay, let's figure out why you're pleading the fifth. And you're like, no, just because I want to. They're not going to just be like, okay, you, you got it. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the Supreme Court decision that, that the justice has made on this regard, because like people do plead the fifth sometimes when they're innocent or they might be afraid, okay, of one reason or the other. It's normal. The criminal justice system is fucking ruthless, right? Um, in the 2001 Supreme Court case, the justice noted that the right against self-incrimination provided by the Fifth Amendment in Ohio versus Reiner, the court case that I was telling you about earlier, okay, that the Fifth Amendment protects the innocent as well as the guilty. The court added that a witness may have a reasonable fear of prosecution and yet be innocent of any wrongdoing. The ruling noted that innocent people might be ensnared by ambiguous circumstances. So her right to plead the fifth in this circumstance was given to her and was protected by the Supreme Court specifically for situations exactly like the one that she was entangled in where okay. she could have very easily been fearful she could have very easily been fearful that she might be and fearful of prosecution now granted now yes. granted she, oh, okay she committed crimes <laughs> Wait, she no, 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 but you're, but you're still doing that. But you're, but remember, you're still doing that. You're still claiming that she is, she is guilty because she pled the fifth. If, if you're, if you're, if you're saying, but you are a fed, so I, I'm not surprised that you think that. But anyway, let's go on. Let's move on. Wait, you're saying she's fearful of prosecution, right? You're literally alluding to the fact that maybe something that she did or could say would be in some realm of maybe 
being able to uh, um, either the, the the DA could pick up a charge on, right? We're not saying. Yeah, it doesn't even matter though. It doesn't matter because what matters is what she felt in that moment. If she feels like she could be ensnared for any reason whatsoever, she has the constitutional right to be able to plead the fifth in that regard. That's it. And that's what she did. She exercised it. Hassan, do you not see that she was the prosecution's star witness and that is problematic? <laughs> problematic? I mean, opening I, I, opening do feel, I do feel like the star witness was probably the person who survived getting shot, but, you know, she was a witness, yes. She was one of the big witnesses in that regard. Yeah, but here's the thing. That's Meg. Meg is obviously the victim, so that's going to be a witness in itself. But I'm talking about the prosecution star witness from a, how do I say this, from an unbiased standpoint, according to them, was Kelsey. And, 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 and they're all, would have been the only person to allegedly well, <laughs> Yeah, when you get shot, you are a little biased. That's true. But, you know you would probably be biased against the person who shot you. In this case, if you claim that it is Kelsey, then she should probably be biased towards her, right? What? No, what I'm saying is that the prosecution in opening statements used Kelsey and said, Kelsey's going to come in here and weave together all our evidence. They were relying heavily upon what? A jail call, a text message, okay? And then also Kelsey's testimony. That's what they were weighing heavily on. And then for everything to make sense and come together, they needed Kelsey's testimony. So when she gets on the stand and takes the Fifth Amendment as the prosecution's main witness, mind you, that is problematic. Well, she, like I said, originally did uh, allow this entire thing to come together with her testimony. Um, the text messages are also pretty damning, too, like uh, saying 911, Tori shot her 